What's going on, chess fans? It's Rafi Chowdhury here with another video. And in today's videos, we're gonna, uh, video, we're going to talk a little bit about the topic of whether chess as a game can be solved or not. And that's a that's a tricky question because um, you know chess is obviously not a solved game currently. Um, that much we know for sure. Um, whether it can be solved in the future or not is, I think, a very difficult and tricky question question to be able to answer. Um, what we can say, though, is that today's um, chess computers are able to play chess at, you know, at a level that's so high, you know, so much higher than the human players, the best pl players in the world, that, um, I mean, in a, in a sense, they're playing, computers are playing perfect chess. And the only thing that I think computers are maybe a little bit weak in still is uh, being able to able to see certain positions as a sort of like a fortress. So whenever chess computers, um, you know, they're not really good at calculating one side or another side being able to build a fortress that just cannot be broken because of the geometric, uh, you know, capability limitations of the, of the board itself. Um, so that's the only area that I think chess computers are still, still just uh, lacking. But other than that, I mean, they're playing literally almost perfect chess to where I mean, the best grandmasters in the world, like Magnus Carlsen, you know, you've got, um, what's his name? Uh, Hikaru Nakamura. You have people like, um, um, the. I, I, my mind is drawing a blank right now. Anyway, Topolov is there, and then there's Lev Aronian, and um, there's a guy from Italy, and his name is, for some reason, Fabiano uh, Caruana. You know, these guys can at best draw some of these computers. Um, even then, it's probably like material odds. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think chess is definitely not a solved game right now, as we understand chess. But at the same time, you know, in terms of being able to play perfect chess, I think that computers have certainly gotten to the point where they're playing, you know, essentially perfect chess. Their ratings are reaching somewhere close to the 32 three thirty four hundreds even upwards of that and human best players are rated roughly around um, 28 you know close to 2900 right now so um, with that being said uh, as we talk about this puzzle uh, topic a little bit more let's do a few puzzles together so we can go ahead and sharpen our brain while talking about uh, chess and chess being able to be a solved game so um, yeah, so we have a position in front of us right now, and um, it's a uh, it's you know it's a puzzle that's rated somewhere in the twenty one hundreds, I would assume. And whenever I look at these kind of puzzles, I like to look at the most forcing sequence of moves first, so which are usually you know checks and captures and and things like that. So I see that there's immediately captures available here on a eight. Capture available on e8, capture on a6 is possible. There's capture here as well on f7, and then bishop can also take on um, a8. So these are the things that I'm considering right now. So material-wise, we do the material count as well. So I've got two minor pieces and one major piece. Black has two major pieces and one minor piece. So we're down the exchange, and black has six pawns to our four pawns and a couple of pawns as well. So we've got to be able to win at least a full rook here in order to, to, to get something significant. So I think um, if we start by taking this this rook with the bishop, he takes our rook, and then we can take the knight. We can take the other rook. But if we take this rook with the bishop, he takes back. We can grab this bishop. Yeah, so this must be the move. Mm, if he does that, then we can grab this one and we're up a piece here. I'm gonna go ahead and move it to this side. Okay, so that's that's the first one. So let's move on to the next one. So yeah, anyway, um, so chess, I think over time, you know, as computers have gotten sharper and sharper and better, I think, um, you know, I mean, chess is still a very creative game. There's a lot of possibilities for, you know, to show human creativity within chess, despite computers being so, so advanced. I think that we can certainly use computers to our advantage to be able to, to 
you know, check, double check our calculations and things like that. They can calculate so much better than us. We can also learn from computers, especially, compu com you know, supercomputers like um, Alpha Zero made by um, Google, I think is a computer that kind of basically was um, given the rules of chess and it, it paid pretty much learned chess by just playing millions of games against itself. It wasn't, it doesn't have any opening book or anything of that type. So from watching people, you know, uh, computers, supercomputers like Alpha Zero, we can learn a lot and we can we can see how Alpha Zero plays chess so much differently than, you know, any of the other computers or human beings because it doesn't have any concept of, you know, opening principles and things like that. It tries to find, it still, you know, has found all the best things to do in the opening by playing itself. But we can definitely see some moves that are just, just definitely not played very often in regular standard chess by humans or even other computers. So that's something interesting. But, you know, chess will continue to be a game that's played, you know, for years and years. I think computers have definitely um, been, you know, made chess a lot more understandable, I think, as, as a game. But it certainly hasn't solved chess for human beings by any any means. I think human beings are still going to be limited to how much we can calculate and how much we can memorize and, and how far we can go with our calculations and things like that. But I think as a whole, computers have definitely um, given humans the ability and, and the the possibilities of playing chess at a higher level than we have before in the past. So let's look at this position here. Um, so the first thing I like to look at in this position is I've got the queen and rook versus the queen and rook i've got one two three minor four minor pieces he's got one two four minor pieces two three four five six seven pawns one two three four five six pawns so we're down a pawn it's the first thing i like to look at is the material count then i like to start looking at and calculating the most forcing moves in any position So, which are usually checks and captures. No. Oh. So the checks and captures, obviously there's a capture here, capture here. Mm, I don't see any other cap, there's a capture there. Don't see any checks. So in these kind of positions, I also like to look at the trap ideas, like queen trapping the queen and stuff like that. It's usually, you know, in the air in these kind of positions, especially given the queen doesn't have any squares to go. So already moves like knight a2 come to mind immediately. So after knight a2, um, queen really has very few squares it can go to. Has to go to a1, basically. And then if we take on a1, the queen, bishop will take. Thinking we might be able to be able to play rook a2 and then knight d2. The same kind of idea in mind. Because he still doesn't have any good squares for his queen to go with. In closed positions, a lot of times we have, you know, a lot of time to do things. So if we can find the right idea, a lot of times um, being able to find the best moves 
<laughs> comes out shows it much e- excuse me much easier uh, simply because we we you know we have all the time in the world to be able to get our pieces to the best squares. So rook a2, what will he do to try to get out of this situation? Because we're threatening knight, either knight actually to e2, I believe. Queen, bishop, 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 pawn, 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 queen. We have to calculate and see if we can escape somehow with the queen. I don't really see any way to escape, so let's go ahead and play this move. Okay. I believe we can play this knight to here and trap the queen. Yep. Very good, guys. Um, we solved that one. So yeah. Going back to talking a little bit more about the chess, you know, being solved, like what, what people mean typically when they say if a game is solved is that we basically know the best way to play. Like we know from, from the very starting position, every possible way that there is to win or lose, like every single possible variation that leads to a win or a loss. Uh, that's typically what chess or uh, solved is called, being solved is called. So in checkers, we actually know that, like meaning that we know that every single move, no matter what, you know, the, the sequence, combinations of moves are, we know of a way that we can get to a either winning, losing, or a drawn position starting from the first move, no matter what you play. So that's really what a, a solved, you know, solving a game really means. And chess by no means is that. There's no way we we know which exact lines lead to what. Um, but checkers, on the other hand, we do know that about checkers. So chess is not a solved game for sure. Although, you know, over the years, a lot of, um, you know, opening lines have been analyzed so much to where we can kind of have a feel for, you know, different, in any opening, really, the first at least 30 moves or so, we can pretty much say what the best moves are in any position and what the position leads to. But after that, really, it becomes, again, uncharted waters, and, and we just don't, there's just too many complicated, too many variations to know exactly which of those variations will always lead to what result you know, with perfect play from both sides. So we don't have that kind of ability just yet. Let's do one more. So yeah, the first thing I wanna do is just look at the material counts of queen and two rooks versus queen and two rooks. So you've got the bishop versus bishop here. Got black has five pawns, white has five pawns as well. So materially, it's pretty even. So captures are here, 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 here. Checks, there aren't any in this position that I can see. Also, look at, I like to look at the loose pieces. So if there's a loose piece, the hanging piece, like these two, this one, I like to look at those as well because because those become targeted targets for us to attack. So, for example, the rook is pinned to the queen immediately right now. We know that. The first move comes to, that comes to my mind is to play here because next move we can just take the rook for free. 
with the pod. So after c4, if he plays something like rook to g3 with the idea of playing rook to g7, then we can take the queen anyway. And if he plays check, we move the king somewhere. And if he takes, we take back. And we're getting his rook and queen. And we're just losing our uh, queen. So let's play this move. OK, so he attacks here. And if we take the queen, he takes our queen. We take back. And I think we're just winning a rook. So yeah, that was pretty easy. So first things first, as usual, so queen and got two rooks here. And then three minor pieces. So queen and two rooks. And he's got three minor pieces as well. Three, six pawns, two, three, five pawns. So we're down a pawn. So a capture here, possible. Capture here, possible. Okay, there's a capture here as well. I don't see any checks. He's got a couple of loose, excuse me, a couple of loose pieces here as well. So we've taken into account those loose pieces as um, as potential targets. The first thing I notice in this position as I'm looking at it is that this knight is pinned. If he moves, then we can take the rook for free with check. So I'm thinking of ways that we can leverage this, take advantage of this pin by attacking this knight again, forcing it to move. So knight to move, moves like knight e8 immediately come to my mind as I evaluate this position. Just trying to see what he would do after knight e8. Or there's also bishop f8 as an idea. But bishop f8 actually at the end of those lines after a bunch of trades happen on d6 would drop the pawn here. So bishop f8, say he moves, makes some move, I don't know, rook somewhere, rook here. Oh, that's actually an idea. He can defend with the rook. Then maybe we can play bishop f8. <clears throat> 
So ninety eight is there a queen to c seven c five as a move? Is that a move? Maybe putting a double attack on our bishop and protecting the knight at the same time. Could we actually play rook takes d6, rook takes d6, knight takes d6? Does that make sense? Hmm. We have bishop f8, queen c5. Maybe I have bishop takes e4 in that position. Oh, so I want to maintain the tension on this pawn right here. Takes here. Takes here, takes here. It's also an idea. I'm going to go ahead and play a bishop to here first. And that was wrong. Wow, both of those moves were wrong. So was it this one? Wow. None of those were the right move. Wow. What's the solution then? No, wow. Really tough puzzle. I have no idea <laughs> what the solution could be. Wasn't that, wasn't that, wasn't that, wasn't this. What in the world? <laughs> I'm completely clueless. Maybe this? Nope. Bishop takes c6. Interesting. And if bishop takes c6, the knight takes here. Puts pressure on that knight. Forces this. I see, I see, I see. Okay. Interesting puzzle. So what do you take here on the pawn? Okay, so queen, we've got the two rooks and two minors. So queen, we've got he's got the two rooks and two minors. One, two, three, four, five, six pawns. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven pawns. So we're up a pawn. There's capture, capture, capture there. Don't see any checks. This is a loose piece in the position. Already I see ideas of taking on B2 and then at the end of those lines and check on A1 picks up the piece on B2. There's also an idea of getting this rook to move so we can play check here. <clears throat> Actually, just kidding. Queen takes. <clears throat> Bishop takes b2. 
or knight takes b2 as a matter of fact rook takes bishop takes rook takes check rook a1 so knight takes rook takes queen a1 check still rook b1 What about a move like knight to a5 attacking the rook? There's also the idea of playing c4 and forking the rook and queen. So if we, if we can take get our knight. Actually, there's also another idea. Knight takes e3. If he takes this bishop, then we have c4. If queen takes, then we have bishop d4. I kind of like that idea. Let's go for it. I believe c4 is the right answer here. I believe we're supposed to take with the queen, so he doesn't have queen to g play g3 at the end of the line. Boom. Got the two rooks. We've got our up exchange basically now. Tax our knight, so we've got the queen and two rooks. And then we've got one, two, three, four minors. So he's got the queen and two rooks. One, two, three, four minors. One, two, three pawns, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven pawns. So materially roughly about equal. Two bishops and two knights, two rooks, queen on the board still. So capture, 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 capture there, capture here. Don't see any checks. First thing to calculate is obviously taking the rook but also first we can take the bishop here then we can take the rook but if we take on e3 he can play bishop takes c6 check bishop takes rook takes queen takes then he can take back our piece but after knight takes e3 bishop takes c6 takes here, rook takes. Do we have an in-between move? Maybe. Actually, if we take the rook here, he, he takes our bishop. Hmm, interesting. You take rook, he takes knight. We take bishop, takes our bishop. So in that line, we're losing a bishop. I'm getting a rook and bishop. Losing bishop and knight. Yeah, that's good. Good for us. If this line doesn't work. Takes here, takes here, check, takes takes and I don't have an in-between move to be able to play then take the rook back I have to just take the rook and then he takes our so yeah we're gonna go with this move oh we played this in between I see I see take back so yeah now he can't win both pieces if he could win both then we would he would be fine probably but he can't so he has to take one and then we save the other one 
So we've got the queen and rook, and then we've got a minor piece. So he also has the queen and rook and a minor piece, three, six pawns to six pawns. Okay. So check, check and capture, capture, check there. Doesn't have any loose pieces per se, but his bishop definitely looks a little stuffy and you know ideas like this and this and this and this are definitely in the air. So the two checks that are in the position here, so queen b1 check, king here, rook here, threatening checkmate. Actually looks pretty good. We can play something like this. I feel like this check might be the right idea, followed by this move and then followed by queen somehow. I don't know. Now I feel like the idea might be to play this. Bishop move somewhere, check, here, here. And if rook moves, then here. Threatening checkmate again. So after f5, where can he move his bishop is the question. None of these move squares work. If bishop here, then we have check, followed by winning the bishop. And if he takes, then we have check, followed by winning the bishop. So I feel like F5 is a move that we can get in no matter what. And if he plays rook e3, then we can play check and pick up the rook and then take the bishop next move. So now we can check. I believe now we can take the rook. He takes, and then we can play. Takes here. He plays. He doesn't have the check down here because the knight's guarding, so yeah. I think that saves the day. Okay, so yeah, thank you guys again for joining. I hope, hopefully I was able to answer your question of whether chess is a, play, uh, a solved game or not. Um, I believe that it's not a solved game and I don't think it will be a solved game necessarily anytime soon either just because of the complexity of the game. But with that being said, chess has definitely made some extremely, you know, f long leaps and bounds in being, you know, advanced. Um, in terms of the computer chess, you know, world has definitely seen a lot of advancements. I think that'll continue to be the case for some time more. 
Um, but in the meantime, chess is going to continue to be a game where people's, you know, ideas and creativity and imagination and calculation and things like that, um, it's going to continue to make chess a very in entertaining and, and, you know, original game to be played by humans for, for a long, more long time to come. Um, definitely going to be a lot longer. Um, so yeah, I think, I think it's very interesting to see that. I, I'm very excited to see how chess develops with the kind, you know, with the age of computers becoming so strong and so good at chess, being able to calculate so much deeper and faster into different positions. So hopefully guys, if you guys, you know, hopefully you guys will be following those, um, that trend as well. Um, keep me posted and updated and let me know if you guys um, need any help or if you, you know, leave, leave, leave me the comments below and let me know what kind of videos you guys would like to like to watch and how, what you guys think about these videos as well. Thank you and take care.